In today's video, we're covering index funds for beginners. And I want you to know that it doesn't matter if you're new to the stock market or if you're experienced, you need to know what's going on when it comes to index fund investing, because you can use index funds and ETFs to make you a better investor. So today I'm teaching you about index fund investing, which includes what is an index fund, the pros and cons, index funds versus ETFs, and how to invest in them. So let's start with this. What is an index? An index is simply a grouping of stocks or bonds or other securities. So for example, the S&P 500 is an index of the 500 largestly publicly traded companies in the US. So the thing is that you cannot invest directly in an index, but you can invest in an index fund. Now, let me explain to you how an index fund actually works. So let's say that you have an index fund that tracks the S&P 500. So that index fund will buy shares of stock in all of the companies in the S&P 500. Therefore, the index fund will mirror the performance of the S&P 500. If the S&P 500 goes up 1%, then that index fund, it will likewise go up 1%. If the S&P 500 goes down 1%, then that index fund will go down 1%. Now, I want you to think about that. Really think about what I just said, because there's going to be pros and cons to this. So let me tell you what they are, and we'll start with the cons. Because the index fund will mirror the markets, that means that if you invest in an index fund, then you cannot outperform that benchmark. So for example, if you invest in an S&P 500 index fund, then you cannot beat the markets. So if you want to become a superior investor, an index fund may not be right for you. Another downside with index funds is the lack of flexibility. So for example, if there are some stocks that you don't like in the fund, then unfortunately you're gonna be stuck with them. It's take it or leave it. That means that if there are stocks that are underperforming in the index fund, you can't cut your losses and you can't have them sold off. And another drawback is the tracking error. An index fund will not perfectly track an index. So if the S&P 500 goes up 7%, the S&P 500 index fund, it might go up 6.95%. And you may be like, hey, where's the rest? Well, that difference, it includes the cost to run the actual index fund. So sometimes the tracking error may be tiny, like a difference of 0.01%, but with other index funds, it may be much more. But there also may be tracking errors if an index fund uses derivatives. In those instances, an index fund will not track precisely. Okay, so we just got all the bad stuff out of the way, but now let's talk about the good stuff because there are a lot of benefits with index fund investing. So the great thing about an index fund is that you can be hands off. You can become a passive investor. And this is great for someone that's new in the stock market or inexperienced. If you do know what you're doing, you're just too busy, Let's just say that you don't have time to research individual companies or you don't have the time to pay attention to macroeconomic conditions, then this will solve the problem. So I understand that we're all busy, life gets in the way, and this may be a good solution for a lot of people to become a passive investor with index fund investing. So here's another benefit. So the truth is that most people are not good at picking individual stocks. If you're not paying attention to the economy, if you're not staying current on the sector, and if you can't read financial statements, well, that probably explains why. So it's hard for even the professionals to beat the markets. So research shows that from 2001 to 2016, active fund managers underperformed their benchmark index. So honestly, if you put your money in an index fund, then you're probably going to do better than most people. I do want you to know this though, because most people, when they talk about index funds, they overlook this part. So recently, passive investing through index funds, it has been outperforming. However, active management generally outperforms passive investing when the stock market or an index is going down. That's generally because active managers, they capitalize better during the market recovery phase. So in other words, when the markets are going up, an index fund tends to do better. When the markets are going down, active management tends to do better. Now, another big benefit is diversification. Diversification is so important for your investing portfolio because it lowers your risk. Index fund investing provides you with a simple solution. 
That's because when you buy an index fund, you're buying up a slice of up to hundreds or thousands of companies at once. With diversification, it's gonna balance your risk and your portfolio will experience less volatility. Now, here's what I suggest to you. I would say compare the pros and cons and see if, see if this makes sense to you. So to review, the benefits of investing in an index fund, it include but are not limited to passive investing, dependable returns, and diversification. The drawbacks are you cannot outperform the lack of flexibility and tracking errors. So I hope you enjoyed that educational information, but I want to give you my, I want to share with you my opinion as well. So I'm going to speak freely. This is like a heart to heart about index fund investing. So if you're going to ask me for my opinion about index fund investing, I believe that it depends on the investor. It depends on the individual person. But for most people, for most investors, I believe that index fund investing does make sense. There are more benefits than there would be cons or negatives because just think about how practical it is. Think about how convenient it is. You could just throw money into an index fund and you don't have to, you don't even have to know what's going on. You don't have to manage it. You could just focus on your job, your career, your friends, your family. You could focus your, focus your energy and your attention elsewhere. It's, it'll be more stress-free. You don't have to make these big decisions. You don't have to keep up to date on the macroeconomic environment or company specific news. So there's a lot of benefits that you have to take into consideration. So sure, the trade-off would be that you're not going to be the next Warren Buffett. So you need to ask yourself those types of questions and be honest with yourself. Are you trying to be the next Warren Buffett? Because if you are, then index fund investing is probably not for you. It's not a good fit for you. Not with the goals that you're trying to achieve. But if you're trying to find a place where you can park your money, excess cash as an investment, and you can do it passively, just check up on it passively and conveniently, then index fund investing might be a really good fit for you. But I do want to say this last part, and this is especially important to beginners because when people are talking about index funds, they usually think about a, a very broad index. Let's just say the S&P 500, right? However, you can use index funds, targeted index funds, to complement yourself as an investor, as an active investor. So for example, if I'm gonna be actively participating in the stock market, then I'm gonna be looking at stocks every day and not necessarily buying or selling every day, but you know, I'm staying up to date as an active investor in the stock markets and I'm buying stocks in all different types of sectors, but I feel like that I'm lacking exposure in let's just say pharmaceutical stocks. Okay, if that's the case, then I could, I could use index funds, a targeted index fund like that, that specializes just in pharmaceutical stocks to complement my overall investing style. And the other approach is that if you do want to park most of your money, the majority of your money with a broad index, let's just say an index fund, an S&P 500 index fund, right? You can park the majority of your money in that vehicle, the S&P 500 index fund. However, if you really have that itch to buy and sell individual stocks, well, you can have the majority of your money in a, in a broad index fund like that, a well-diversified index fund like that. But then additionally, you could complement that by buying the stock picks that you like. Let's just say, well, you really think Tesla is gonna do good, or you really think Microsoft is gonna do good. Then you could have the bulk of your money in an index fund that you could use smaller amounts of money to make your stock picks. But it, the bulk of your portfolio will revolve around index fund investing. Now, let me answer some really good commonly asked questions about index funds. Are index funds popular? The answer is yes. Index funds were introduced in 1976. Investing in index funds is the most common form of passive investing. It is estimated that passive investing in the stock market makes up about 15% of the markets. That's the official stat. Some estimates are that it's over 30%. So yes, it's very common, very popular, so this is nothing new. Another good question is how do you invest in index funds? Okay, so it's very easy. You will need a brokerage account or a retirement account you pick the index that you want to track and then you buy shares of that index fund. So it'll be very straightforward. Another very good question is how much money do you need to invest in index funds? Most index funds have no minimum requirements, so it could be a great way to get started with very little money. 
And I'll answer this last question. How many index funds should you own? So that's going to depend on how diversified a particular index fund is. If you invest in a well-diversified fund, then you may only need to own one index fund or two index funds. However, if you invest in an index fund that's more targeted, then you may need to own more than one or two in order to create diversification. Now, I want to tell you this, and this is very important for you to know, and a lot of experienced investors, people that have been in the market for years, they still don't know this. So I, what I want you to know is the difference between index funds and ETFs. An ETF is an exchange traded fund. The truth is that when you, when you compare an index fund with an ETF, they're going to have more in common than they are different. For most people, an S&P 500 index fund or ETF will functionally be the same. But here are the differences. One big difference is that you can buy ETFs throughout the day like a stock. For index funds, you can only buy them at a set price at the end of the trading day. So technically speaking, ETFs are considered to be more liquid. However, if you're a long-term buy and hold investor, then this is probably not gonna make a big difference to you, but it's still something to note. Another big difference is the way that ETFs and index funds are taxed. So with an index fund, you could owe taxes without ever selling a single share. That's because when other investors cash out of an index fund, the fund manager sells shares in the fund and the tax consequences are passed on to every investor in the fund. With an ETF, you're typically selling your shares to another investor. Therefore, ETFs are considered more tax efficient because of their structuring. However, this may not matter if you're buying an index fund in a retirement accounts, but please take this into consideration if you're using a taxable brokerage accounts. So there you have it. Those are the bigger differences. Now, if you're going to buy an index fund that tracks the S&P 500, or if you're going to buy an ETF that tracks the S&P 500, for most people, especially if you're a long-term buy and hold investor, it's going to be the same thing because they're essentially going to be tracking the same thing. They're going to have more in common than they will have in differences. However, just know the differences because they may matter to some people. My advice to you is whether you're going with an index fund or an ETF, please check the management fees and check the expense ratio. So generally, the lower the cost, the better. That's because higher fees, they're going to eat into your returns and that can compound into something significant if you're investing for the long run. So listen, this was an introduction to index fund investing. This video is not about picking which index funds are the best, which we'll save for another video. Please be sure to check that one out. But just to give you some general ideas to get you started, I want to say this. First, you should decide which index that you want to track. Do you want an index fund or ETF that tracks stocks or bonds or something else? Do you want domestic exposure? Do you want international exposure? Do you want both? Do you want an index fund that invests in large companies and small companies or a little of everything? So you can buy shares in an index fund or ETF that invests just in technology companies or just in companies in Brazil or, or just in energy companies or just in treasury bonds. So there's going to be something for everyone. Now, we'll be covering much more on index fund investing as well as ETFs. If you want exclusive content on investing or in the stock market, please check out our website, clearvalueinvesting.com. I'll leave a link down below. Thank you so much. I wish you a very nice day and please take care.